Hey guys, my name is Mark from JazzGuitarSons.net. Welcome to the vlog. Let's dig right in How about this. And this. Alright, and so on and so on. So in this vlog today, I just want to, well, first welcome. Thank you for being here. It's just a quick one. You see, I have lots of natural light. I didn't want to go full studio mode. I just want to talk about uh, what I call complete arpeggios and also the film negative uh, of these complete arpeggios. So here's the point. When you have, uh, when you learn arpeggio, typically people will tell you, well, all right now I was in G major, right? Uh, and you would say, well, I got my G major seven arpeggio, I have my A minor seven, B minor seven, and C, etc. So you will learn diatonic arpeggios or you will learn arpeggios as a sequence of four notes. So go G, B, D, F sharp, and then G, B, D, F sharp. So you'll learn the same sequence of four notes across a fingerboard, which is amazing. I mean, it's a necessary, <laughs> let me put this the way, it's a necessary evil to go through these shapes and things. However, in this vlog, I always like to bring these sort of alternative takes on things that you already know. And for guitarists, often we have the, the problem, one of the issues that we have a line that's going on and we have to stop. Sometimes because our fingers can't keep going. Uh, unlike a piano player, you'll see them, they just keep going because there's notes forever uh, that way and that way. So the, the concept in this video I'm presenting is called complete arpeggios, meaning that in this case, uh, I use a C major scale in what I call 6-2. You can refer to the blog. It's an old blog post. We keep revamping, adding stuff to it. It's called uh, Ultimate Guide to Scale Positions or something like that. Uh, it's been uh, revamped re relatively recently too. So if you start your C major scale in 6-2, you'll play C, D, E, F, G, A, uh, uh, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp. I was still in C major. And keep, keep your hand in that box here around, your index is around fret two, right? Uh, and in this position, what I recommend people do is, yes, you learn the scale up and down. But my advanced students also tell them, well, how about you maximize your arpeggios in there and you will just play the G then skip the A and play a B. So play a third, play a third up, and a third up, and keep going. So ultimately the result of this is you're playing arpeggios that go up to the 13th, if you want to analyze it in this way, which relating to the chords. However, on, on my end, I just think of this in purely technical matter, is exploring a different aspect of the scale and doing it in a complete fashion, which I, I love to do. It's super simple, right? So you just go up a third, so long as your position allows, and you practice this as an exercise. Because all of the arpeggios are included in that, so the diatonic arpeggios. And now that's not the end of it. Oh yeah, sun, the sun is coming. That's nice, I love it. Um, that's not the end of the road because every time you start with this finger, if you start with another finger, you're going to look at the, the, the other side of the same position. So it's like a film, uh, a film for a camera, like the negative of that film. So if you start with your G scale and now you start with your F sharp, you're going to have a set of notes that are different. So you're going to go like this, right? Uh, I'm sorry. So you go two octaves. So up to the 13, sometimes back to the root and back to the next note. So regardless of what you name these things, they're really useful little devils to have under your fingers. And now after you extrapolate this and you go, oh yeah, I'm here and here I see, I see inside of this, that's an E minor seven arpeggio. All right, feel free to, you know, shed this arpeggio and, and look at it from a four note arpeggio standpoint um, if, you, if you want, right? But in the context of this exercise, I'll just recommend you do complete arpeggio. So let me do this in just a few positions. I'm a bit rusty, so, well, no excuses, but you'll see. Um, G, that's the one I played in the very beginning, then start from F sharp. And of course you don't have to stick to a position, it's just the way I'm presenting it now. And now let's move on to the next scale position I call 6-1. So the scale would be this. Discovering the entire two, uh, the entire span of what my fingers can cover, you can line up your pinky with the seventh fret, right? And then here you grab your arpeggio, you go. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I told you I was rusty. Right? Okay. 
So those are the notes. And then your fill negative, instead of starting with G, now you start with A, right? So you go. Oops, sorry about that. See? And then I covered two positions. In the article, in the blog post, The Ultimate Guide to Scale Positions, you have uh, either five or seven. There's a seven way of doing it, which is a Berkeley method, and a five way, which is like the cage system. And if you cover your complete arpeggio over all of this, even if these things don't have a name, it's just another way to play a scale. It's, you're playing a scale by, it's like uh, climbing stairs, but you're skipping every other step. You're just like going by two instead of by one. So then you will find things in there that you will want to explode, explore and explode. Yeah, explode actually, and you'll have uh, say, uh, oh, I have my B minor 7 shape in there. Like, oh, yes. And then you might want to take it. And then you'll want to explore that part of the arpeggio or even... Uh, so that's a B minor 7 going back to the B and back down. So you might want to start to tweak these things, but that's a really good way to do it. And say you do seven positions, you do positive and negative, so the complete arpeggios. And what about you start to do the same thing, but now I'm in G, you could do G melodic minor. So instead of you go. So repeat the same process. You'll get a set of different fingerings, a set of different exercises, and just a good little tool and tip to get under your finger. Um, as opposed to other vlogs I published, uh, you know, the recent past, this is not so applied. It's more like purely a technical brute, for the brute force exercise, which is something along the lines I work with my students. So if you are um, interested in working directly with me, uh, I can we can get on a call together and I can map you a custom plan so you know how to take your plank to the next level and you can explore stuff like this, stuff about comping, stuff about chromaticism and bebop and improv, like all the stuff I work on with my, my coaching students. So get on a free call, solely free. Uh, type in next level dot next level dot you can pick a spot in my schedule and we'll get on a call and talk about this stuff all right on that note that's it please let me know if you have any questions or suggestions about this uh of course any comment anything you say it's like oh you could do this on a 251 yes you could do this with diminished scales you could do this with a minor 25 you could yeah of course yeah all of this is applicable to everywhere anything it's just um for me, the complete arpeggio concept and the film negative is a way to sort of go further with an arpeggio rather than be f forced to stop after like four or five notes, right? And to also to see how the arpeggio is all scale and the scale is arpeggio, it's all the same thing, ultimately. All right, on that note, I'm Mark from Uh What's the, did I lose it? Yeah, uh, see, I'm losing my French all, already. <laughs> Jazzcarlsons.net, improve your jazz guitar playing with a real teacher. Woo! Yeah, maybe I need another co coffee and I will see you soon on the website. Take care.